Hello and thank you for coming on board Nigeria Votes today. Uh, my name is Vivian Oguche and I'm always glad to have you on board. Please accept apologies for coming on board a little bit behind schedule. But lots of matters arising following the just concluded presidential and national assembly election across the country. So today we shall take a look at some of uh, these issues, right? Uh, just yesterday, Chairman of the National Peace uh, Committee, MPC, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, uh, retired, met uh, the leadership of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Uh, and during the meeting, uh, Mr. Atiku Abubakar presented a six point demand to the federal government. Uh, top of the list is on freezing of opposition politicians' bank accounts. This begs the question. What happens if the federal government decides to meet these demands? And what happens if the federal government refuses to meet these demands? We intend to explore all of these angles on the show today. But first, a quick look at the latest news on Nigeria's general elections. Uh, members of the General Abdul, Abdul Salami Abakara National Peace Committee yesterday met with the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abakara, in Abuja, like I said earlier on. The closed door meeting was convened following Atiku's decision to go to court to challenge President Mamadou Buhari's victory. Uh, General Abdul Salami Abakara said the committee is working towards reducing the current tension following the controversy which has trailed last Saturday's presidential election. You know, the Peace Committee is always interested in ensuring that uh, there is peace in the country. Apparently now tensions are high and we need to see how uh, we can uh, douse the situation. We have come to listen to the uh, uh, grievances from the PDP and then we'll continue shuttling to see how we can uh, make sure that this peace is maintained. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will conduct supplementary elections in areas where National Assembly elections could not hold last Saturday or where returns could not be made, according to a press release signed by INEC's National Commissioner in charge of the Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye. The decision came after the leadership of the commission met with a resident electoral commission's uh, commissioners on Thursday. Mr. Okoye also said the commission is satisfied with the level of preparation for the gubernatorial poll. Now, so lots of people have been reacting to Mr. Atiku's plans to head to the court. So what does the people think? Uh, let's find out. Take a listen. We handle that eventually later on. Uh, time for me to introduce my guest uh, to you. I have joining me live from Abuja now, the National Chairman, Action Alliance and Secretary, Contact and Mobilization Committee for the CUPP, Kenneth. Udeze. He is joining us live from Abuja. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Udeze, uh, for joining us. So the PDP is part of the CUPP. So are you all on board? Are you on the same page as regards the PDP going to the court to contest the presidential election results? Uh, uh, thank you for having me in the first place. Um, yes. Um, PDP is a member of the CUPP and um, before the decision of the presidential candidate of PDP to head to the court, he uh, was able to reach out to a substantial number of members of the CUPP where I act as a secretary of the contact and mobilization committee. Uh, I one thing is certain, you cannot uh, beat a child and um, ask the child not to cry. Uh, going to court is a, is a legitimate and a civil way to you know, agitate when you, are, when you feel that uh, your right has been trampled upon. Uh, it has been happening in Nigeria. Uh, election tribunal is always an aftermath of um, election, more especially where the losing candidate, so to speak, 
uh, is not satisfied with the conduct of the election. As you, as Nigerians already know, the election that took place on the 23rd was uh, more or less a charade. Uh, we all see, saw what happened in Lagos State, we saw what happened in Rivers, we saw hap what happened um, in so many states in this country. The, the election was characterized by violence and uh, the processes that led to a credible election, which we started agitating from the beginning, which has to do with the signing of the, um, um, the amended sections of the Electoral Act that can, you know, where the card reader is expected to transmit uh, electronic transmission of result from polling units to ward level and the local government collection center. But the president, who already know that if he go that line, definitely, if anything hap should happen in the election, there may be there may be a bottleneck. He refused to ascend to that bill, and that this is the result. Where you go to some states, you, you begin to imagine in states where there is no violence in this country, where there is no insurgents. Elections took place, card readers were employed to make sure that elections take place. You go to places like the Northeast, where there is <laughs> insurgents everywhere. You find out that uh, over 90% turnout of registered voters. I mean, we are not kids. Nigerians are not kids. We know what happened. And the best way any reasonable human being who went into for an election can go about this is to go to court. It's not a, it's not a matter of um, in, uh, engaging in violence, no. You cannot solve uh, uh, something, a probable violent situation with violence, no. The best thing any reasonable human being can do is to approach a law court and seek redress. So I believe the decision of the PDP to okay. go to court and its candidate is not, uh, is not wrong, and we're in support of that. I hear you. So what I hear you say is that you are all on board uh, the Mr. Atiku contesting uh, the results. But let's find out what the people are thinking. We, we took a look at uh, some of, in fact, we went to town, talked to a cross-section of Nigerians, and here is what they think. Take a listen. Um, looks like we are not going to have that soundbite eventually. L let me move on uh, with you, uh, Mr. Udeze. Uh, so um, there, there is a six-point demand that Mr. Atiku sent to the federal government. Right? I was going to ask. We are going to take a look at all these uh, demands one after the other. But if these demands are met by the federal government, uh, would you hold your fire? For example, uh, Mr. Tiku wants the federal government to unfreeze the account of politicians who are in the opposition party. If the federal government happens to accede to these demands, would you not go to court? Honestly, a freezing of account of some opposition, unfreezing of account of some opposition uh, leaders in the account uh, in Nigeria is not enough. It's not enough for us to say we are withdrawing from going to court because it will look as if it is a, it's an indirect threat to the federal government. Honestly, uh, some of us uh, in the coalition, when uh, such an issue was raised, uh, we, are, we discussed within, among ourselves, Nigeria, we wouldn't want to bring issues uh, before Nigerians that would make it look as if we are actually agitating for this. Part specifically because of the accounts of opposition's, opposition leaders that are being frozen. No. If we want to do something, you have to follow it justiciably. What we are, if we are saying, fine, the election that took place across Nigeria was marred by you know, visible rigging. We are card readers. We are not employed to conduct the process that leads to electioneering. Come bringing the issue of um, freezing, uh, freezing of account will make it look as if that is an indirect threat to the federal government. If we are saying we are going to court to challenge this, let's head to court. Why going to court? The issue of unfreezing of account, there are courts in Nigeria. The courts of competent jurisdiction in Nigeria are meant to. They, when cases of unfreezing of account comes, they handle it. It's not everything that you have to bring into a uh, condition. I raise this issue. It's not going to, going to challenge this matter, uh, the issue of the rigging that took place in two, uh, 23rd of this month, uh, last month. It's a different thing. Then the different kettle of fish. Then going to court 
to challenge for the unfreezing of uh, account of opposition is a different thing. I wouldn't want us to miss that issue. The truth remains that Nigerians, majority of Nigerians, are not satisfied with the way the election went on, on the 23rd. And I must say this, I must, I must say this, and I must emphasize it in this program. What transpired, in as much as we are all members of the coalition, what happened before the election is also a lesson to PDP and some of us who are in the opposition. You know, you cannot, you cannot be overconfident in everything. You have to be sure, you have to keep working, keep working to the dying minute. Not when you feel that Nigerians are already giving you support. Therefore, the nitty gritties, the necessary things you need to do before election, you now skip it, thinking that God will come from heaven to cast the vote for you, is not, is not, I mean, yeah, we, we, we vehemently reject that. So there are certain actions that took place, but that is the background information, which I don't need to reveal in the national TV. When we get back to the uh, CUPP, when we get back to the coalition, we discuss that. It's a lesson for us for future election. A whole lot of things took place, which I cannot reveal in the national TV. What I know is a very big lesson. The only option we have today is go to court and challenge this. If we succeed, fine. That is if the justices, for, we, you know the problem we had with respect to the appointment of Justice Tanko. APC have foreseen this thing. That's why Justice Tanko has been, uh, been appointed. At the end of the day, where may we go? So we are all now, we are all now basing our hope in the, in the judges that will sit before the presidential election tribunal, depending on the judgment each and every judge. You know, uh, Look at it systematically, look at it deeply, and find out which judge and which judge is a natural person without being intimidated by the government in power. Right, Mr. Odeze, I would have loved for you to tell us what must have transpired, you know, before the elections. But you said you wouldn't want to say that right now. So, I mean, with respect to your uh, privacy. But there are other demands that the, uh, miss, uh, the PDP uh, said they were going to send to the federal government that accreditation of voters should take place before voting in subsequent elections, that there should be no deployment of the military in subsequent elections, that INEC should open its back-end server to all participating uh, parties and that there should be a release of all political detailed uh, all our politicians or in the opposition detained illegally by the FG these are some of the six point demands that the PDP also made apart from unfreezing the account of um, politicians in opposition parties but while you chew on that let's quickly take a look at what the people are thinking on the streets of Lagos and uh, we'll come back even him if he himself be won for this election, I don't think Buhari will go to the court. Because if he go to the court, he has won already. They've told us all our vote. This is the next president. He shouldn't go to court. He should wait for his time. If God still say he's, he's still going to rule this country, nobody's going to stop it. We would rather be on the same page with Agbakoba. He rightly advised that going to court is not the right thing. Because we saw the election, everybody saw it. If you go to the polling booth, you saw what happened there. You vote, you wait, and the, the ballot uh, papers were counted at the end of the day. So is anybody saying that is not what happened? So going to court, I know he's not going to get anything out of the court. He's only going to end up wasting his money. That's, That's a case going to court, but the issue of signing a chance, we do understand how our courts work in Nigeria. So instead of him going there and then, of course, he doesn't get the, the, the desired justice that he has he's so craved, why don't he move on? But I'm sure he, he's already seen what will happen when he goes to court. He may, that might be the reason why he came up with some of these demands he gave out to the National Peace Commission after the meeting, or rather the meeting, the meeting that they held. I can record this particular election and 95% okay by me. So he should not go to court, but he's a sight. Going to court, I'm a lawyer. If he should go to court, at the end of it, huh? <laughs> though litigation is a pendulum, I don't think he can win. There is no need going to court because the process is already is already shambled. You know, uh, who is going to who is going to meet at the court? He is not supposed to go to court. He can, at least after the ten or four years, he can still re, uh, recontest now. Then we uh, we go on. That's the way I see it. I think he has every 
right to approach the court. It is now left for the court to decide whether his actions is justified or whether there are grounds for him to contest the outcome of the election. I think he should give it a try. The, the court is there for everybody. And as a Nigerian, he's entitled to his um, opinion. Yes, he has a full right to go to court. Let him go to even the international court. Seriously. Yes. Not even Nigeria, because Nigerian court here, and we know that they, they all have power. They are going to change everything. We support him to go international. If, if it's not uh, clear or it's not satisfied with the result, can go to court. There's no problem in it. What's your There you go, the voice of the people, Mr. Odeze. I hope you listen to all that the people have been saying. Uh, I would have loved for you to listen to this before you made your comments as regards going to court. But then again, would you want to react to uh, word on the streets? Well, um, you know, Nigeria is a multilingual country. So people have their own um, way of reasoning. Um, you cannot take it away from Nigerians. But one thing is certain, it's not in every court you attend that you, that you may expect, it's, it's two things, it's either you lose or you win. But one thing, why we are insisting that we should employ the process of going to court, is for us to also learn, is for us to also learn. Because you cannot take it away from the courts in Nigeria, uh, the wonderful justices we have in this country. There is something to learn from the rulings of the justices at the end of the day. And it will help us for another legal framework year, whereby we have to now go to, you know, to the next uh, coming election. Because a, a good politician will start immediately to start to strategize for the upcoming election in four years. That takes me to the question you asked earlier that has to do with uh, continuous uh, voters' accreditation and, uh, and voting at the same time. We raised this issue, I've been issue, before the election. And at the end of the day, there was a stakeholders meeting between us, the political parties, and the Independent National Electoral, Electoral Commission, where they uh, also explained reasons behind why they insist that, that uh, it should go that way. And at the end of the day, after much gifts and takes, we, we said, OK, fine. After all, it's a two-way thing. Uh, we have to monitor ourselves as political parties at the polling booth, uh, make sure that nobody uh, toil away with um, all, all our efforts. So that is that for that. And the, the other uh, six-point demand which you raised, which has to do with, um, you know, making sure that opposition le uh, leaders that are in detention, you know, are being released. Yeah, these are some of the, you know, one of, some of the things we agree, you know, apart from the earlier one which, I has, to, which has to do with the unfreezing of accounts. If somebody is found culpable or guilty of, uh, you know, reaching him, himself illegally, fine. The account can the account can be can be freezed. So, but to this extent, what we are saying is that for those polit opposition leaders that have been in detention, for instance, as we speak, one of one of these is 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 hiding in his fatherland because of unnecessary warrant of arrest that was issued to him, against him, before the election. You cannot, that is not how opposition can flourish in any developing country. Mr. President, I call on him. Uh, you know, in as much, the INEC has declared him the winner of this election. He should also try as much as possible to be magnanimous in victory and not bewitching the opposition. Uh, for instance, I'm sorry to say that he, on the course of, you know, receiving his uh, certificate of return, was thanking over uh, 15 million Nigerians, so to speak, that voted him into power. Without also thanking other Nigerians who came out to vote, even though they didn't vote for him. That is a true test of a good leader. A good leader must not al always talk about those that voted for him. That is where he started having issues from the Southeast in the last election, where he said he cannot, not the same way he handled those that voted for him, that would be the same way he handled those that didn't vote. He don't do that way. Once election has come and gone, and you have emerged as a leader and as a, the, the, um, the, the president of this country, you should be able to carry everybody along. You are now a father of the nation. It's not an issue. So if it is those people that have surrounded you with the, the, the so-called cabals that are asking you to say things like that, it will not all go well for you as a president. A leader, a leader must be able to lead both the good, the bad, and the ugly in the country. That in that way, we hope that the next four years, I mean, Nigerians will really 
you know, find, find it funny. But I doubt. We just believe and we pray and hope that things will work out, you know, uh, for the benefit of Nigerians at the end of the day. Safe place to land. Thank you so much, Mr. Odeze, for joining us today. Uh, that is our show uh, for you today. I mean, we, I have been speaking with uh, Mr. Odeze, who joined us live from Abuja. Um, I'm going to be with you, same station, same time, Monday. So be sure to keep it with me. Until then, though, enjoy your weekend. I'm Vivian Oguche.